Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Techie Smarts Tech Toolkit. In this episode we will be discussing Hiren's Boot CD. First off, let's just quickly discuss what is Hiren's Boot CD. Hiren's Boot CD is a rescue CD that includes a whole bunch of software. The software is a specialized collection that contains solutions to all kinds of different computer problems. One word of advice, a lot of these pieces of software, if not used properly, can cause bigger problems or hose the system up altogether. So do keep that in mind as you use it. With the word of caution out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the way that I use Hiren's Boot CD to accomplish some of the fixes that I've needed in the past. One of the reasons I use Hiren's is to reset Windows login passwords. Now you may say, wait a minute, why would you want to do that? Passwords are there for security purposes. And this is all true. However, on occasion, you may have to crack into one. In my case, I use numerous virtual machines, uh, ranging from Windows XP to Windows 7. And occasionally I do forget the passwords of them. So I have used Hirens to actually get into my own virtual machines through VirtualBox before. I've also had friends call me up, say they bought a computer secondhand, and rather than wipe everything, they just prefer to, uh, to get in there and clean it up a little bit and change the username and password themselves. I do not recommend this if you buy a secondhand machine. I do recommend if you have access to the disks or the repair partitions to go ahead and wipe and reload. That way you start up clean and you ensure that there's nothing there You know that's going to cause you trouble later down the road. However, you do occasionally bump into issues where you need to reset a password and Hirons is great for that. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to use this Windows 7 install and we're going to pretend that I've forgotten the password. So let's just go ahead and punch in the password and as you see there is a failed attempt to log in. Let's go ahead and click OK. Put the Hirons boot CD in your CD or DVD drive and click down in the bottom right corner and go to restart. The machine will restart and if you have your BIOS set up properly uh, to read from a CD drive first then it'll go ahead and launch into your CD. If not you may need to press your BIOS's boot menu button. In my case with VirtualBox it's F12 and I'm going to take option C to boot from the CD-ROM. If everything went well you'll be greeted with the Hirons boot CD menu. Now you notice I'm using version 15.1 as of this recording, 15.1 was the most recent version out on their website. If you use your area keys on your keyboard to scroll up and down through the menu, you'll notice that there are a lot of menu entries listed in Hirons, which means there's a lot of stuff here. Personally, I only use a couple tools here. Um, if you get in a jam and not quite sure where to go, you can take the first option and just boot straight off your computer's hard drive, which means you'll just bypass Hirons and boot like normal. I'll reset the virtual machine here so we can uh, come back to the menu. Let's just briefly touch on a couple of utilities that might be handy. There's a version of Mini Windows XP. You'll notice that there's also a MemTest and Windows Memory Diagnostics. We also have a password resetter for Windows, which is very handy. We'll demonstrate how to use that momentarily. There's Conboot. If we go on down, uh, there's a couple other options. Derek's Boot and Nuke is a very handy tool. It basically does a zero fill uh, several times across the entire hard drive. Then it deletes all those zeros. What that does is try to wipe most of the data off those drives. It's a good way if you're looking at getting rid of a drive, as long as it doesn't contain something like very personal data, uh, you know, anything that could possibly be damaging to you. If it's a, uh, you know, your kid's laptop that needs a, another hard drive and you're just going to wipe it and replace it, you know, it's a great tool. If you're looking to just reformat a drive, Derek's Boot and Nuke takes a very long time to finish, so it's probably not the best option for that. But if we scroll back up and go to DOS programs, we're brought to another menu. If we go down through these options, you'll notice that this is a categorized menu that contains all the tools built within Hirons. For this example, we're going to reset our Windows 7 password. So we need to do so by using the arrow keys and moving up our selection to the password and recovery tools. Or you can also press number 3 on your keyboard to enter into the option. And then we want to scroll up and take the top option, which is number 1. That's the offline NT. 2000 XP Vista and Windows 7 Password Changer. If we take that option and press enter, it'll launch the Password Changer utility and we can get in and step through that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Most of the options in the menus will show up at the bottom of the screens. So we'll just zoom in here so we can take a look at it. Now you'll notice the next menu that comes up down here gives us some information about our hard drive. This program has detected two partitions, one being marked as the boot partition, the other one being listed as SDA2. SDA2 is of course where my Windows 7 is currently living. So what I need to do is take the number 2 option and we can go in and change that. If you need to do some other things such as uh, you know, manually selecting drivers to load or loading additional drivers, 
Uh, you can also do some different things with the partitions down at the bottom. There's options for that. But in my case, I just need to take option two. Once you press number two, hit the enter key, and the program will go out and try to find the path to the registry directory listed in Windows. If you notice, it's already found it in Windows forward slash system32 forward slash config. You can change this if you need to at this prompt. Uh, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and press the enter key to take the default. Now we need to select what part of the registry to load. We have three options here. We can either load the password reset, we can launch the recovery console parameters, or we can just quit the menu altogether. In our situation, we want to change our password, so I'm going to take the number one option and press the enter key. Press one and hit enter, and now we're brought to yet another menu. It's loaded the hives in the registry. We have three options. We can either edit user data and passwords, we can launch the registry editor, or we can quit the menu altogether. Since we do just want to change the password, we're going to edit user data and passwords. So we can take the number one option and press the enter key. Now we're greeted with a little table here that has a list of user accounts set up on that machine. You notice we have an administrator, guest, our home group user, and of course a Techie Smarts account. The Techie Smarts account is the one that we tried to log into previously in the video. These accounts will be different for every machine that you work on depending on how the usernames are set up. You will notice that this table shows us that the Techie Smarts account is an admin account and it's currently password locked. At the bottom we have a prompt where you can either hit the exclamation point to quit, the period to list the users, or you can enter the hex user ID. In my case, I'll just type the user name. So I'll type in Techie Smarts and hit the enter key. As the screen updates, you'll notice that the next menu we're brought to, right in the center of the screen, we have some more details about the account. It's more like a little checklist of some of the specifics about this account. If down below that, we have a failed login count, and we see that it's set at 1. And this is the account we tried to log into earlier in the video, and of course we entered the wrong password, so it failed. And it says total login count 12. Down below that, we have our user edit menu. We have several options here. We can either clear and blank the user password. We can edit or set a new user password. There is a note here to be careful when using this on XP or Vista. I have not tried this on 7. Usually I just blank the password out and change it later. You can promote the user uh, to like an administrator user if you wanted to. And you can go on down and you can do some other things with user accounts. So in our case, we want to take the number 1 because all we're going to do is blank out the password. What that will do is, just like it says, it will basically just erase that password and allow you to log into Windows. Simply press 1 on your keyboard, hit the enter key. You'll notice it only takes a second to work. Then you're prompted with a password cleared. Underneath that, we have a prompt that pops up. This is what we had earlier. We can press the exclamation point to quit, period to list users. You can enter the user hex ID for that user account, or you can enter another username to blank out another password or change another password. Since we only had one user account we were going to mess with, we're essentially done. We need to press the exclamation point and hit enter to quit. And it's basically going to step us back menu by menu until it prompts us to save our changes. We need to exit this menu, so simply press Q and hit the enter key. When you do this, you'll be taking a step four, writing back changes. This is where we basically save the changes that we've made. If you made some kind of error or something like that, you can take no and go back through the menus. But in our case, we're going to say Y for yes. Hit enter. You'll notice now we have a prompt that says edit complete. Beneath that, there's a note that says you can try again if something failed or if you selected the wrong user account. If you need to do a new run, you can say yes and go back through. Now we're going to say no. So press N, hit enter. And now we're back at our very top level prompt. We need to type in reboot and that will reboot the computer. Now we still have the higher end CDN, so we need to test our windows by taking the first option to boot from the computer's hard drive. And just in case you get greeted with the Windows error recovery screen, don't panic. Just arrow down to the start windows normally and press enter. And then you should see windows starting to boot. You will notice that the boot time may vary. I've edited some of the waiting out in this video just to, to cut down on time. But essentially there you go. We're no longer prompted with a user account to log in. The user account is still there. It just no longer has a password. If you need to go back in and change that password, go back into the control panel and you can change it there. Now this is just one reason I use Hirons. There are many others. Uh, booting into mini Windows XP is really nice. Uh, it gives you a graphical interface to be able to go in and use the same tools within Hirons that, uh, that you can use through the regular just DOS looking menu. It gives it a nice little graphical front end. Uh, it's good to run antivirus, rescue files using Windows Explorer and things of that nature. Uh, but there's also several other tools that are very handy to use as well. For sake of time we can't really get into those. So 
As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to visit our blog at techiesmarts.com. Also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook. All those links are in the description below. If you're watching this on the blog, they're also listed below the video there as well. Be sure to tune in next week for episode three of Techie Smarts Tech Toolbox. Once again, thanks for watching and have a great day.